What we have here with these shutters are steel coated in zinc and where the zinc's worn off down the edges I actually want to have a bit of rusting going on they're not aluminium so I'm going to take some neat brown oil paint a dryish brush and just paint a line of the colour up the edge where the shutter would run up and down in its rails do this on both sides I'm going to work on just the right hand side of each shutter and then turn the whole model so that I can get a good angle on it I'm just trying to work this oil paint into the edges here this isn't really a wash, this is like a kind of dry brush using oils. I'm going to take a big soft brush now and just blend that oil paint in. It softens the line and just suggests that we do indeed have a line of rusty exposed steel where the shutter runs up and down every day. Quite a simple technique but it works fairly well. Right, I'm going to do another little thing now. I'm going to use some of my favourite German camouflage black brown to create some direct chips through our zinc coating or our fake zinc coating. I've actually got some chips already in the plaster finish so I'm going to use those as an intentional element where we've got some pretty serious scratches and gouges as a result probably from our exploded wall and also just daily use where the zinc has been chipped off and revealing the steel below. And we're here just establishing a dark oxidised steely finish. I'm only doing this on the ridges of this shutter because these are the high points that would probably be most exposed. As always, you can observe real life for this kind of thing. Shutters are found pretty much everywhere. Keep it random. It all adds up to make a nice realistic finish. Now we have the dark background colour for our steel chips. I'm going to go back in with our nice rusty coloured oil paint and just cover each one again with that brown. We'll make streaks from these downwards in a minute but the first thing to do is just to get some oil paint over these scratches which we'll then smooth out with our brush. It doesn't have to be hugely precise because we're going to blend this in in a moment with our soft brush but it's important to get every single one because a rust streak would form from every one. Let's go back to our soft brush again and then just draw this downwards blend it in and then we can also to enhance this effect take a little thinners and just make short flicks downwards which helps to accentuate these rain induced rust streaks that will probably do for that one fairly battered shutter there but I think it looks quite convincing considering it's cast integrally with the plaster as well Now this final shutter appears to be a doorway, so I'm actually going to paint in a black door step because it will help to blend the model into a diorama should it be used in one. It helps to unite it with the groundwork because it's telling us more clearly that this is actually indeed a door. As we have a very dusty corner here where the building's been shattered, I'm going to try and continue that using some dry pigment this time, just on the edges of the window frames because obviously the dust would have fallen down and settled here. I don't want to overdo this, otherwise it will obliterate our nice rusty look. But as this is a very dusty environment, it's important to capture that appearance. It does in fact help to tone down some of the rust, which isn't a bad thing, because in some areas this is a bit extreme. Also, if this is an abandoned building, the shutters won't have been open for a while and the dust will have really settled in. I'm also going to run a line of this dry powder across the bottom of the building, which will aid us later on if this building is used in a diorama. Don't worry about the pigment that falls onto the work surface. If there's loads of it, you can collect it up and put it back in the pot. But normally, just blow it away or hoover it up. Move on to the end one. Because this shutter goes right down to the ground, we can put a line of fairly hefty dust along here. To flick it up and down. When we apply pigments dry like this, they don't stick as well. When they're washed in by the paste method, the granules actually penetrate the model slightly. But this way, it just sits on the surface. But it is a useful aspect of their abilities, just for putting a subtle extra touch of dust to blend things in as we're doing here. On our modern building we're going to simulate some commercial artwork that's actually been damaged by tank fire or machine gun fire. And the first thing to do is create a background colour for our sign panel. I'm just going to fairly roughly mask out a rectangle at the top of this section of wall which seems to be the most suitable area for this particular signage. 
I think in reality this particular style of painting would have been done by hand and the masking tape is going to give us really too precise an edge so what I'm going to do I'm going to take the end of a paintbrush and just bend around the edge of our masking tape just to make that a little less even and perhaps simulate a hand painted area. Of course you could just hand paint this panel but I do want it to be rectangular so therefore I'm going to do this approach. I'm going to pull that edge around a bit just to give it a bit of irregularity not forgetting the corners. And now it's time to choose a colour. Let's spray our panel green, because then that will be in sympathy with the green painted shutter next to it. I'm going to use Vallejo Zinc Chromate Green, but it can be any colour you like because this isn't a strictly accurate representation of a particular building, it's just a generic. Put the paint on. I'm just going to put it on slightly heavier around the edges and then just let it fade slightly towards the centre. And we'll dry that off. Let's remove our masking tape to see how our green panel looks. There we have it. I think that slightly wobbly edge adds a nice degree of hand-painted look to it. And now we can apply some characters which we're going to hand paint. The first thing I'm going to do is use some matte black to create the background for our Arabic characters. Well, I'm no reader of Arabic, unfortunately. I can't vouch for the accuracy of this. I'm just going to copy something off a painting because we're actually going to do some damage behind this. So there's going to be very little of this remaining. So all I'm going to do here is apply some of the patterns that I'm seeing in our reference view. So it's all a little bit random. But by the time we finish with this area, there won't be much left to see. So it's not critical that it's absolutely accurate. It's a bit of a mess, but we're going to do some extra work to this now. Now we've painted a black background to our characters. I'm going to use this pale grey again and paint in the centre of the characters, giving a black border with any luck. And again, I'm just copying the style that I found in a book. I'm not sure what this actually says originally, but this is going to be pretty much obliterated in a moment. Unfortunately, someone's used it as a naming point for their tank gun. So we're going to now simulate a hit on this wall, and that involves the use of some tools to knock out some of the plaster work. And then we'll give it a nice dusty look to look like it's been struck by something powerful. Now it's time for a bit of amateur stone masonry. I'm going to use a chisel blade in this knife and something heavy to hit it with. And this is great fun, destroying all your hard work. I'm just going to take some chunks out of this face here. The plaster cracks realistically, just like concrete would. You don't want to go too hard, because we don't want to split the whole building. Although I have to say, it is fairly strong. We'll take it up to this top edge. I'm just going to now tap the surface. As you can see, most of our signs are gone, but that's the effect we were after anyway. You can even keep these little pieces here, because that actually could be quite handy for ground scatter when this is ultimately fitted into a diorama, which may happen in the future. The best way to remove all the small particles is just to blow it away. <laughs> there we have the main hole where the tank shell struck, and now we're going to go in and refine that damage. I'm going to use this much finer chisel tip tool now, just to go in and tap away at the plaster to refine the very jagged edges that look a little bit overscale. This could be an RPG or a tank shell rocket fire, all sorts of things. We just want to break that up and make it look heavily damaged. What we could also do if we wanted, which I won't do this time, is even to lay in some strips of wire or solder wire to represent the steel reinforcing strips that would be present inside here. But as we've already done it on that corner, I don't think we probably need to suggest that again here. I'm not going to paint this area, I'm just going to finish this off with some pigments. I've made a thin mix here of MIG Pigments Light Dust, which has that green finish that we've seen before. I'm going to just go in and paint it straight into our 
damage on the face here. The plaster is extremely absorbent so it soaks up the thinners very quickly so you'll actually need a little more than you may thought at first. So paint it in, get it right in there, work it out over all these scratches because we don't want any of this bright white plaster on show on our finished model. And then what you can do now is draw a broad stretch of this dust straight down the front of the building and then also pull it outwards to suggest that it's been thrown all over the front here. OK, and we'll dry this off now. The final thing to do here is to use our wide, fairly stiff brush just to work that dust in, make it look a little bit more natural. You can wipe some of that away with a fingertip and that just reveals that lovely jagged edge where the remainder of the sign is. And then just work the dust around. Make it look a little bit more realistic there than when it was just painted on. And there we have a quite obvious strike from something military that's hit the front of our building, radiated out all these gouges and where they've been aiming at this commercial sign. It adds another little nice spot of realism to our modern building.